Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, this is Lisa De Nicholas with my novel, The Rage Room, and here is The Rage Room. The Rage Room is set in 2055, and I'm referring to this novel as a not a not a work of fiction, but a work of prediction. And I'd like to read a small piece from you today, and I hope you will enjoy it. So Sharps is our main man, uh, Sharps Barkley, and he is on a date with the future love of his life, Celeste. Our hockey date was a giant success. Celeste was an animal pounding on the glass, drinking beer and swearing like a sailor. She was a powerhouse and all I had to do was be there. She annoyed the people around us, blocking their view and spilling drinks on them, but I made her feel loved no matter what. I had, miraculously, got one foot in the door, and I had to make this work. And what exactly did I mean by make this work? Marry her? Yes, exactly. She could make my fantasy come true. I wanted to prove to my loser father that I could be the man he'd never been. And I wanted to show mother that I was a winner. I could already see the family Christmas flashcard, Celeste and the kids in white, a silver and blue crystal Christmas tree in the background, and me in a pale blue suit grinning. Happy Christmas from the Barclay family. Plus, marrying Celeste would secure me a lifetime office in Sky the Tower, Jazza or no Jazza. I'd be promoted to the 150th floor at least, and I'd be okay with that, being a middleman, interviewing the interns that I had once been. I'd put my feet up on my white Lego desk. Mm, no, maybe not actually put my feet up because then I'd leave scuff marks. But I'd metaphorically put my feet up and I'd enjoy the view. So when Celeste spilled half of her fifth beer on me, I just laughed. No worries. Ha <laughs> ha. I laughed just like her father did, with my head thrown back. We were having so much fun. Weren't we having fun? Oh, baby, she said to me later in the bubble limo that daddy had sent for us. You're the best. Oh, sweetie. I'm so glad I met you. I wasn't even going to come to that awful drinks thing, but I'm so glad I did. Listen, you want to go to church with us on Sunday? Church? Celeste was Mama and Minnie's new cats? I thought they were passé, and I must have looked startled because she grabbed my hand and held a tight. Yes, yeah, sweetie, we go every week, mummy and daddy and me. And then we have brunch after. You'll come, right? I've never asked anybody before. Well, actually, you know, I did, but that was years ago. A sad look crossed her face and I brushed the hair out of her eyes and hadn't realized she used that much hairspray and I wanted to wipe my fingers on the car seat, but I didn't want her to notice. Yeah, we're new cats. Mama's still around, still fighting for Jesus, so we have to too. Jesus would never give up on us, right? Come on, sweetie. And brunch after mimosas, hot chocolate, eggs, Benny. Um, I'm not super religious, I said, not wanting to admit the extent of my atheism to her, but trying for some level of honesty. Sweetie, you don't have to be, she was earnest. Just come, okay? It's only an hour and then food to die for. And you'll meet mummy. Uh, what must I wear? Celeste thought this was hilarious, but I was serious. What did one wear to church? Seriously, see, what must I wear? I worry about stuff like that. And that's what makes you the gentleman that you are, baby. All right, specifics. No running shoes, loafers are good. A linen shirt, two buttons open, no more. No jewelry, not that you would wear any. A blazer is good. Blue is always in style. I sighed with relief. Thank you. It's the little things that keep me up at night, I said, and I pulled her closer. I worry, you know. I try so hard to get things right, but sometimes the specifics seem vague. It turned out later that I love church. I'd only seen the buildings from the outside, whitewashed Dutch-style barns with a small gable at each end and a high-pitched red corrugated roof with an ornamental rooster weather vane. The new cat flag was clearly still flying high, with the parking lot spreading for miles, and the service was well attended. The interior was a shock. The place was a neon carnival with white pews and 
white leathery cushions and the stages of the cloth the stages of the cross flanked the walls while Jesus hung from a giant white neon cross in the front surrounded by fluttering cherubs and angels while blood flowed convincingly from his face and side in a fluid neon movement. Jesus was a good looking surfer fellow and I was momentarily taken aback by his likeness to the ever popular Chris Hemsworth avatar. Big blonde Thor was the new Jesus. No wonder Celeste was such a fan. And the seats were comfy too, memory foam I bet. Once you sat your ass down, it was hard to get up. Celeste's mother was thrilled to see me and she kept showering me with double wide smiles. Mummy's teeth were replacements, of course, but they seemed weirdly small, which was odd since the dentures were all measured with such precision. Mummy had had all the work, implants, Botox, facelift, and dyed hair with extensions filling out her thinning thatch. Mummy was a Swarovski waterfall of diamonds clad in Chanel, and her Wolverine manicure looked deadly. But what amazed me was how much I loved church. And later, Mr. Williamson took me aside. There's a side to you I never knew, he commented, and I blushed. The priest appeared at our side. We're looking for a men to join our choir, he said, and I couldn't help but hear your wonderful tenor. And I nodded close to tears with joy. His kindness hit me hard to be wanted. The priest said he'd flash me the details, and as we walked to the limo, I thought that even if things ended with Celeste, I'd be okay. At the very least, I'd get church out of it. And I wish I'd thought of it before. We arrived at brunch and left the girls, as Mr. Williamson's called them, to their first drink, round of drinkies in the main lounge, and we headed for the main bar. Wanted to chat to you man a man, Daddy said, tapping the side of his nose like an old-fashioned British spy. Sally's a bit fragile, like a tipple a wee bit, but that's because she struggles in life, and Mummy found her place with her charities, but Sally's always been a bit lost. We wanted an ordinary life for her, as much as one can have, you know, kiddies and family traditions, and Sally's an only child and getting on in years, and we both like grand kiddies. Me in particular, I love the little chaps. Don't know why I never thought of you before. There you were, right under my nose, and I never saw it. He beamed at me and was starting to wilt under the hothouse stare of his pale general's eyes. I was backed up against the bar and the edge cut into my spine and I worked hard to maintain my grin while I nodded. Marriage and kiddies would make Sally happy. How old are you, son? Forty-four. I forced the answer through clenched teeth. My back couldn't take much more of this. Perfect. Sally's thirty-eight. We can get help if you can't conceive. Conceive? We hadn't even been on a second date. Regardless, everything I'd ever wanted was all coming my way, albeit somewhat like a freight train. Don't shoot blanks, do you, son? Daddy lost his good chair in the edge of the bar, but deeper into my spine. No, sir. At least I don't think so. We'll have you tested. Sally's fertile. We've had to get her out of a sticky situation more than once. Losers she met in rehab and brought home. And those places weren't cheap either. I'm not sure how they let people like that in. We're practically blowfly level and took a while, but we learned our lesson and sent her to private clinics after that, women only. She still makes friends, that's just who she is, and she's getting better every day. Listen, son, to segue, be careful of Ava. She's in line for my title when I move up the ladder, but I'm going to throw your hat in the ring instead of hers. You've been a dark horse in this race all this time. Plus, I don't like Ava one little bit. By now, I was bent over backwards, and my back was ready to snap in two. I was going down two vertebrae at least. I was beginning to have my doubts about the whole thing. Take on Ava? Not a chance in hell. I was struggling with her as it was. And Celeste sounded like harder work than I cared for. Rehab? Sticky situations? And Daddy must have seen the fear in my eyes, because he gripped my arm and yanked me close, patting me so hard on the back I nearly choked. 
Don't worry, love. don't worry, son, he said soothingly. One thing at a time. We'll get your swimmers checked out and take it from there. No point in putting the cart before the horse. Now, let's go and join the girls for Eggs Benny. Finest in time. Finest in town. So, as you can hear, I'm really very fond of the Rage Room. <clears throat> and I really, really hope you will be too. Um, it's an adventure from start to finish. Thank you very much for tuning in and for listening to the reading today.